Let's see, we have snow in Ohio. How is the sun there? Oh, the sun here has been scorching. It has been absolutely scorching. And I expected that, um, that it would be hot during the day and cold at night, um, but it, it hasn't been very cold at night at all. Like I've been sleeping in a sports bra and leggings only to cover up my gross legs so that they don't touch my sleeping bag. But um, let's see. Awesome. Hey, from Miami, Ohio campus. Um, awesome. Texas, Minnesota. Took an early lunch at work for the Q&A. Man, y'all are making me feel, another Minnesota, y'all are making me feel special. Thank you. Well, um, so starting out, uh, the first day that we got to trail, um, the road there takes, well, first of all, we had the, the day y'all may have seen me post in Patreon that we had, uh, the day that we didn't get there. Um, we didn't, we didn't take the right road. And I was like, you know, I know the road's supposed to be rutted up, but I don't think it's supposed to be this rutted up. And, um, you know, but boys get, um, determined and, and that's okay. We love them anyway. And so, um, they were determined and, and we were within five miles of it to be fair, but, uh, the road just wouldn't let the vehicle pass. So we ended up going back to town, staying another night in a hotel, which was fine. It gave Aaron, um, more time to edit and catch up videos. Okay. So, uh, we started out at about two o'clock and I didn't drink any water from that morning until we hit the trail. So I was like pretty dehydrated starting the trail, which was not smart. And then we started in the heat of the day. Cause like I said, we didn't get there and do all the pictures and all that and start walking until about two. So that might've been a, a that was a bad idea. Um, so I had a pretty bad headache the first night, but, um, you know, once I got to the cache the next day, I was fine. And, uh, I've, and we've been fine. Um, Aaron is a little sick. He had um, some diarrhea, not last night, but the night before. I'm sure that he loves that I'm sharing that about him. But um, so I don't know what it is. I uh, don't know if it's something he ate, but he seems to be fine now. He got to town, got to sleep, you know, in town, drink some Gatorade and stuff. So we should be heading out later today. Um, if the majority decides that they want a zero, I'm totally up for that. But uh, so far, we're heading out sometime today. So all right, um, that's a basic rundown, um, and I'm sure y'all are probably gonna ask anything that I might mention just running my mouth. So, um, so I'll go ahead and start taking the questions here. All right, everybody healthy, joints, blisters, tendons. Okay, so yeah, Aaron got a little sick to the stomach, uh, but he's fine. Um, we all kind of started off a little dehydrated, which was dumb, but you know, we're okay. Um, and for myself, I have a little chafing um, between my legs. So when my skin gets dry, it didn't happen on the AT, but when my skin gets dry in the desert, like on the PCT, and you know, the thighs touch that aren't used to touching so much and having dry skin, it's kind of like they sandpaper one another. So that happened, uh, I've been putting on lotion and been putting, uh, I use chapstick. And so when I put my chapstick on, I just rub a little chapstick there on my legs and it seems to be helping. So um, that'll eventually go away it'll get used to it. Um, it's just, I kind of expected it. Uh, my feet don't have any blisters, no toenails popping off. So that's good. Um, my feet are a little bit sore, but normal sore. Um, nothing crazy. My hips are a little sore from the pack of, or the pack of the weight, the weight of the pack sitting on it, but that's normal for me too. Um, they actually haven't bruised this time. Like, Ooh, excuse me. Um, they've just kind of like, they're sore, but I don't see any actual purple bruising. So, um, that's good. Uh, and then everyone else, no blisters or anything like that. So, um, okay. Let's see. Hi from Colorado. There are folks all over watching. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm your planner fasciitis twin. How are the feet holding up? Yeah. Um, so far that hasn't, the plantar fascia hasn't really been bothering me. I mean, I feel a little twinge every now and then. Um, but I need to start stretching it, uh, more than I have been, but, um, so far plantar fascia isn't giving me any fits. Um, but I do have those insoles that I think help me a lot. Uh, the, um, Dr. Scholl's for plantar fasciitis. Hi Dixie, how far apart are the water supply points there in the desert? That's a good question, Sean. Um, so there has been no natural water source. Like there hasn't been a creek. There hasn't been a spring. They've all been either cached. Um, so most all of them have been cached 
uh, about 13, it's anywhere from, I would say, 10 to 14 miles apart are the water sources in this first stretch. Um, yesterday we hit a, a cattle trough that is, I assume, from a well and it's pumped. So, I mean, yes, while it's natural water, it's being pumped from a well, um, it's not natural in the way that it naturally flows to the surface itself. So that's been a little disturbing, you know, um, knowing that we're persisting on caches and like you have to rely on that. Um, but they like we did pay for the service. So like they're supposed to be there. <laughs> um, but you know, I always have the in reach in worst case scenario, but um, but it's still it is a little concerning. In the picture you posted, it didn't look like there was a visible trail in the desert. Are there blazes within sight of each other or question mark? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you picked up on that. There is not necessarily a beaten path. And some of the beaten paths that we come across are cattle paths. So you think like, oh, look, it's a trail. And you start to follow it. And then you realize that it's because the cows have beaten that spot to death. So, um, but there are places where you can kind of see a defined trail and and other human footprints um but most of it is like either on a dirt road or like a wash like you're following you know a creek bed like a wash um or a lot of it is kind of bushwhacking through brambles and bushes and um you know my legs are pretty tore up so i'm still not swapping to pants but this would be the trail to wear pants if you think that you need to wear pants because of the brush. So, um, there are a lot of briars and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's been, that's been fun. Um, there is not a defined path for that, but the way that you know where you're going is there have been these fence posts. Um, so you'll be at like one fence post and if you just kind of keep walking the same general direction and look, you know, you might see the other fence posts, but the thing is like, the yucca plants um, have that stick going up, so it kind of looks like posts. Um, but this last stretch that we were in, they had actual CDT signs, like on T posts. So, um, but then some of the signs have fallen off, and then you're looking for T posts. So it it's been mentally exhausting in that way that you're constantly looking for, um, you know, some kind of sign of where the trail goes. But I have the Gut Hooks app too, so um, which is GPS. So that's that is nice. So how much is the trail? degraded, meaning AT is most developed PCT, great in sections and rough another CDT. Um, the CDT is just as much as they say not developed as like the rumor is true. The CDT is not like a well-defined path. Um, there is a lot of bushwhacking, but like I said, some of it's following dirt roads and the washes. And so those are very clear, you know, you're on a dirt road. And to me, that's like nicer than a trail. You got this wide space and people can walk three deep and you know talk and, and enjoy I don't know it's kind of cool walking next to somebody instead of like in front and behind but um so yeah it is every much as undeveloped as they say so how many hikers are starting now a horde um well uh we've seen five other hikers we've seen um a guy from I think Australia and then a guy who did the PCT last year and the Arizona trail and then a guy, um, or two guys that are from Oklahoma, and then one girl from Germany. So only five other people so far. I see you went back to the anti-gravity rain jacket. Do you like it better than the outdoor research jacket? Honestly, I, I like both. Um, I like the colors of the outdoor research. I know that sounds, you know, girlish or material materialistic, but I just like the bright colors of it. Um, and I like that it has the little hood thing um so the water doesn't get so much in your face um the anti-gravity gear i like that it's lighter and it has pit zips so because i wasn't anticipating much rain in the desert section um but i was anticipating it to be cool and a lot of wind uh, I figured that it would be a good like windbreaker jacket and then it would give me the, the pit zips if I wanted to aerate, you know, my armpits and not sweat so much. So that's kind of why I went with that. Um, but I do like both of them. And if it was raining a lot, I might would go back to the outdoor research just because that little hood thingy. Because um, I do like that. Uh, how many miles are you averaging for now in the heat? Um, so in general, like we could do more. It's been hard. It's been hard for me to throttle back you know my mind is still 
20 miles per day is like an average day, you know? Um, so having to go back to like a 10 to 13 mile per day, um, has been difficult, but I did it. And, uh, I think my knees and my body is thankful for it. So I assume from here on out, we'll be going at least, you know, at least 13 miles a day. Um, and it just keep building up. Wondering how the inReach works and do you do anything from a hydration standpoint other than water electrolyte wise? Uh, did you carry, oh crap. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I about closed it out, I think. Um, do you carry any extra water? Sorry for all the questions. Don't apologize for all the questions. That's what this is. We can do live Q and A without questions. Um, but let me look again and make sure I have all of them. Okay. Um, okay, the inReach works well. So been texting and letting my family know um how i'm doing and mayor how i'm doing um all along i've uh, been texting perks family and aaron's family and stuff like that keeping everybody updated um so i think that they're excited about that um also been uh well, well at the road crossing we were able to text a guy that does shuttles um to come get us so uh, we sat there for a little over an hour and had six people come by and nobody even slowed down. So, um, actually they ended up calling, uh, earn that back slap. They ended up calling, um, somebody, uh, border patrol. Border patrol came and got us and took us part of the way to this little town called Hachita, um, where we got some Gatorade and stuff. And then we were able to, you know, text the guy and coordinate the, the shuttle. So not sure how we're getting back to the trail today yet. Might have to take another shuttle, but... Um, just to save the time, you know, from hitching, we could have sat there all day. And if Aaron hadn't been, you know, feeling a little off, we probably would have just waited. But so it has been really nice having that in reach. Um, so definitely recommend that for the CDT. So I've been carrying 4.7 liters of water from cash to cash. So I've been filling up full capacity. Um, the last stretch from the last cash to the road yesterday was six miles and there was a cash at the road. So, um, I only carried two liters for that. I try to do about a liter for every four miles. And while I'm at the cash, I drink and I cook a meal, you know, so, uh, I'm not toting all that extra water just to go cook somewhere else. Um, so, uh, let's see. I think that got all of those questions, Tony. Um, hi from Texas. Kevin says how, how y'all are. <laughs> Hope you're having fun. Well, I'll tell you, the first couple days was pretty rough. Um, I don't, I, it was definitely that top two fun. Uh, but yesterday I was actually enjoying myself, kind of getting back in the groove of things, getting, you know, I won't say trail legs, but starting to form trail legs, you know, just looking around and kind of actually enjoying the beauty that is the brutal desert. Um, so I don't know, it was kind of nice just trucking along and the wind was really whipping and um oh somebody asked about the umbrella so yes when I sit down and take a break I definitely am using my umbrella so I can create shade wherever I need to it's not the same as being able to like lay out under a tree you know and spread out you have to kind of ball up under the umbrella but it is nice to have that however I'm gonna have to get a hat in town because um I have sunscreen, but the umbrella while you're walking, the wind is just whipping so hard that it like inverts that umbrella and has broken a couple of spokes. And, um, so still keeping the umbrella. It's just that I'm going to have to, um, get a hat too, to kind of shade my face when the sun is, you know, or when the wind is so bad that, that I can't use the umbrella. So I'm, I'm going to have both. And, um, yeah, sunscreen has been a lifesaver, but I find that it kind of dries my skin out. Um, that, because I use SPF 50 out here and I find that, I don't know, I just get dry skin, but that could be the wind and the sun too. So, okay. Definitely get a hat with a way to tie it on as windy as it out is out West. Yes. Well, you know, on the PCT, we had like windy days, but it wasn't just like nonstop, you know? So the umbrella was very useful there. Um, it's still useful here for breaks because there is no, like people are putting in gut hooks, what mile markers the trees are at. So people know where they can get shade. Like that's how bad it is. Dixie, will you be using the inReach positions reporting feature and will you be sharing the points with us? Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm probably gonna, uh, I'll let y'all know where I'm at. Like when I talk to y'all in the live Q and A's, I don't think that I'm gonna be posting that. Um, I'm not real familiar. I'm still learning about all of that. Um, so I, I mean, my mom is getting my messages and stuff. And so I guess 
she's able to to track me um but i'm not i'm not sure yet on that i'm gonna think on that because that would be kind of cool um i'll definitely be sharing where i am with y'all you know when when i get to town and stuff like that how often do you need to charge in reach so when i got to this town after what three and a half days um it was on 50 percent so it's gonna last me you know a week on trail um, probably no problems and I could even dial back how often I'm using it if I if I wanted to how is the new camera gimbal working out so it's done pretty well Aaron's used it a good bit um, and I've used the drone more uh, so we have like we're like maybe we should swap up you know so that one of us can get used to the other thing um, so I carried the gimbal uh, yesterday but I, I think it was kind of going dead so um, so it wasn't working quite right but I'm gonna play with it a little bit here in town where I can see the screen better and see what's going on because um, out there the desert is just so bright that it's hard to, to see your phone and what you're capturing um, South Lake Tahoe all right Kelly that's I've I can envision South Lake Tahoe that's pretty awesome uh, how's the wildlife so far any exciting critter encounters you know that's a good question um, it's been eerily is that a word eerily strangely um not full of life uh there have been a few lizards um i saw more birds yesterday than the days before um but no uh that, there just there has been until we saw the other hikers i was like is there life out here are we on mars you know um but the the cows there have been cows and cow doo-doo everywhere so there are some signs of life i see coyote scat um but there just hasn't been a ton of it um which i'm sure that it will increase as we go north i mean this is the most wild trail so um but yeah to start off with it's been it's been pretty desolate hey from florida seen any wildlife worth noting yeah see like three of y'all want to know about the wildlife and it's it was it's, so far it's been underwhelming but it's only been like 46 miles so i'm sure there's going to be a lot of awesome stuff but we even made bets about rattlesnakes so I said within 10 miles, Perk said within 11 miles, and Aaron said within 40, and we're past 40 and we haven't seen one, but if you go by the Price is Right rules, then unless we don't see one till the end, Aaron wins, so, well, oh well, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen a whole lot of anything, no, I've seen no snakes, which is kind of nice, I'm not really complaining, but, you know, are you going to be doing any fishing on this trip? Um... I don't know. I haven't aimed to get that Tenkara rod yet. Might when we get up north more. It'll just depend on how much time we have and stuff like that. Um, so, but it would be fun. It, I, I really um, would like to do that, especially when I get to some of the rivers and, and things in like Montana, you know, like a river runs through it. Like, doesn't everybody want to be Brad Pitt in that movie? I mean, I'm a girl and even I want to be Brad Pitt. As weight conscious as you are on the trail, what do you do for fishing gear, bait, tackle? I haven't, I don't have anything with me now, but on the Sierra Nevada, I took a Tinkara um, little rod, so it's pretty lightweight. I don't remember exactly how much it weighed. And then I took some flies. So, you know, there was no reel. Um, it was just like a telescoping rod and then um, with some line at the end of it and just tied a, a fly to it. And then you just, you know, whip it. Um, that's what I, I did on the PCT, but um, that's what I would do again out here uh, if I get it. I'm not sure. Uh, hi from Beijing, China. Looking forward to watching the adventure. <gasps> from China? That is so cool. I don't think anyone's uh, watched a live Q&A from China before, so very neat. Hi Dixie from Idaho. Did you get any up or did you get an upgrade on your sunglasses? No, these are still old Dollar General. See, my eyes are all puffy. I don't know if y'all can see how red they are, but they're pretty red and puffy. Um, I look like I've been crying. <laughs> the CDT is so mean. I shouldn't laugh because I will cry on trail eventually. <laughs> it, it happens. If you don't cry and you don't crap your pants, you're not a real through hiker. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's TMI, y'all. Um, Cindy says, how long is the desert stretch? When do you expect to get into different terrain? So the Gila route, which is like a there are a lot of different routes and alternates and things like that. So the Gila route goes through, um, like you cross over rivers and stuff like that. And I think that's not too far out of Lordsburg. So like mile 100, I think it should look different. Um, but I don't know. New Mexico, I think is about 500 miles. 
Um, I imagine a lot of it will be desertous. I imagine even getting into Wyoming, you know, you're going to have that high desert area. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of it, but not necessarily like this. Like, I think this won't last as long as the desert on the PCT. So, um, but I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm just kind of rolling with it <laughs> and seeing what happens. Okay. It will be windy in Colorado, uh, in the, it will be windy in the Colorado high country and definitely in Wyoming. Yes. Wyoming, uh, that's where all the semi trucks flip over, right? Because the wind is so crazy. Um, Dixie, on the PCT, it seems the more dangerous events occurred while you were hiking alone. Can you say what your thoughts are about separations among you all on this trail? Well, I think Aaron and I will probably be sticking together most of the time because of the videos. You know, um, he's editing and, um, and so I think we'll, we'll stick together. I think when I go home for graduation, he's probably going to sit in a town somewhere out here and edit and then um, catch up. And then when I come back, we'll hike together. I'm not sure yet what Perk's going to do if he'll keep going like last time or if he'll sit and hang out with Aaron or if he'll um come home with me for graduation you know I don't I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna happen I'm not sure yet how I'm getting home for that even but um but we'll see yeah it's it is always a little bit scarier when you're alone you know but um I have run into people out here so I have hope that even if I had to sit in a spot for a couple of days somebody would come behind but um again I have the in reach so I feel so much better with that like just I mean I know that's not going to save me when I'm dangling from a cliff and you know I've got 10 minutes before I'm going to fall off but like for a lot of things you know it's it's really nice to be able to have that communication I'm going to move inside real quick because I don't want my phone oh to die so let's see Ugh. hi from London wow that's pretty cool so we got China and London and um, loving the updates and inside scoop while you're on trail will we get any q a's with Aaron or Perk joining in well, they're actually here right now, <laughs> but they're like, you know, doing their stuff like, oh, wow. Look at Aaron's legs. Yikes. That actually looks really rough. Today. <laughs> it doesn't look so bad when you got the desert sun in your eyes and Perk's washing his dishes and stuff over there. But, uh, but I mean, they're, they're usually around, but if y'all have a question, then, uh, Oh yeah, let him see your town skirt. I don't know if y'all can see, but he's got a he's got his beautiful town skirt on. Can you see yourself in this? I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm like it's. Oh, should I? There we go. There, there's Perk's town skirt. <laughs> we just need to get him a wig, and people will call him the bearded lady. Um, where were we at? Oh, would night hiking help with the wind and temp? Is that a possibility? So with the way that you can't hardly see the trail already and uh, you're like looking for the fence posts off in the distance and it's just like a stick and then a stick and the stick, it would pr probably be really difficult and more time consuming to do it at night. But and some are knocked over. And some are knocked over or don't have signs or whatever. Um, so I think uh, for now we'll just stick to try trying to get up early and hike <laughs> and then... Um, and then, you know, once it cools off in the evening. But, yeah, I mean, that's what I would do on the PCT or the AT um, is not hack. But it's just out here. It's a whole new world. Um, what was your first trail dinner? I had Mount House lasagna. That was it. I actually have had that twice now. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I don't know if I was sitting in town if it would be as good. But on the trail, it's divine. So, um, Daryl says, how are the starting jitters compared to what you felt on the AT and PCT? Um, well, that's a good question, Daryl. Uh, I would say they're not as much, like jitters as far as um, being actually nervous to start. I was just ready to, to start, um, but I don't know. I don't really feel nervous because I, I feel like I know what to expect. Um, it was just getting out here. Getting to the trailhead was the hardest part of getting started. Uh, but it's been good so far and I mean, it's been, it's been tough. It's been, I don't know if I want to say harder than the AT cause I didn't know what to expect at all with the AT, but, um, it's been tougher than the desert in the PCT for sure. Does the inReach seem like a distraction on the hike with text capability? No. Um, what is a distraction more for me is when I know that my mother is worried and I have no way to uh, say, Hey, I'm alive. So I try to push myself harder to get to town or to service, to let her know not to call search and rescue. 
that weighs on me more than having the ability to text. And, um, you know, yeah, I guess it could have been more of a trail experience if we had been sitting on the side of the road still, like, waiting on a hitch. But having the ability to message, text message somebody that has a shuttle so we didn't waste time. I mean, yeah, I guess in one way you could look at it like it takes away um, from the experience. But I don't know. You know, it's like, I, I think it, for me, it enhances it and it and it gives me that sense of like if we get into a bad situation we have a way out and I don't know that kind of puts my mind at ease and I think allows the experience to be more enjoyable because I'm not stressing over that so um, I mean for example you know when the first day when I started out so dehydrated and then yesterday when Aaron was so dehydrated like knowing okay if he falls out you know, we can tend to him the best that we can, but we can call for help. Like, that was just a good feeling, so I don't have to stress over it as much. Um, but, yeah. And, I mean, you don't have to receive any text you don't want to. Like, I, I have it set to where it doesn't receive anything unless I click, like, check for messages. So, I have to actually go, I'm ready to receive text messages now and actually click it um, before I get any. So, um, are you using the mapping features on the inReach at all? Are you pairing it with your phone for ease of seeing the maps and waypoints and messages? Thank you for reminding me of that. So I had it paired with my phone and then somehow it unpaired um, and I couldn't get it to pair back up while I was out on trail. But it's a lot easier to text when you can text through your phone and send it through the inReach. Um, so I haven't, I've been just like click, 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 probably annoying um, Aaron and Perk, but uh but yeah, it, it will be a lot easier. I have mapped like where I've slept. Um, and then the messages, when I send them to my family, like they can pull it up and see where I'm at. So that I thought that was kind of cool. And I can go back and see those messages on a map too. So I'm, I'm still learning how all of that works. But it sounds like you're pretty familiar with it, Shannon. Um, so maybe I can learn from you. Um, how do you know where or how to find the water caches? Um, so when we signed up for it, they have a map that shows kind of the approximate locations and you know that it's going to be somewhere near a dirt road probably, or like a paved road, you know, somewhere where they can easily pull up and, and take jugs of water out. So, um, but we know that they're about 13 miles or so apart. It, it gives information on the CDTC website when you either take the shuttle through them or you pay for the cash service. Um, so, and then also Gut Hooks app, um, has little waypoints for where the caches are. Alex, do all of your legs look like Aaron's? Um, mine aren't as bad. I think Aaron just, I think Aaron just likes the pain. <laughs> he, he, he just tears through. I mean, I've got some on mine, but mine are just more scaly. We well, can't really see. Yeah, see, there's a little bit, but like, and Perk actually wears pants, so... There's that. Uh, hey Dixie, do you know what software Aaron is using to edit the videos? Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro. That's what he was using before. But then you went to something else a little bit. And then you went yeah. back to that. So, But yeah, Final Cut Pro. Any trail magic yet? Not counting the caches. No! No. And uh, we said something about trail magic and Aaron was like, I don't know what trail magic feels like, you know, because no, there hasn't been any yet. And we even hit some road crossings on the weekend, but no trail magic. Not yet. But, you know, with it being fewer and far between, if we get some, like, it'll be more appreciated, right? So, are you going to answer the same questions from Steve Adams? Uh, no. I mean, Steve asks questions. So, Gary is talking about um, a podcast that uh, Steve Adams, who does the Mighty Blue show, asked me to be on. So, um, when I'm in town, so he'll be talking to me and whatever. It costs to like subscribe to the podcast because probably that's my fault he wanted to do something through patreon like his own patreon and i was like i'm not doing that because like i have patreon i have patrons and i'm not interfering that you know um and then he wanted to get sponsors for the podcast so that it would be like a free podcast and i was okay with that but i just i didn't want like oh z packs is gonna sponsor the show and now Everyone thinks that, like, I work for z -Packs or something, you know. I don't, I, I just get kind of funny when it comes to um, sponsorships and stuff like that with gear companies because I feel like you can lose credibility doing that, you know. Um, so then he was like, well, then I'm just going to have to make it, like, subscribe through the website. Um, so Steve will be asking me, you know, whatever questions pop into his mind. Um, 
uh, some of them I'm sure will be the same as things that y'all ask me here. But the thing is that th the difference is with y'all on Patreon, I'm doing a live Q and A and like talking to y'all directly. And, you know, you can ask me any questions that come to your mind and I answer them right away. You know, um, with that podcast, it's, you know, people will listen to what Steve felt like asking and, you know, what I answered kind of thing. So, um, it will be more up to date than the videos. So I think that that would be, um, a reason that people might would want to subscribe to the podcast so that they have more of a real time feel. Um, but they don't get to like the listeners don't get to submit questions or anything like that. Thank you for the sponsorship info. I've always wondered about that with you. Do companies hound you about sponsorship? So they don't necessarily like hound about sponsorship. I've had some message and like say, Hey, how about I send you this for a positive review or whatever. And I just don't do that. Like I, I just, I mean, I don't know. What if like one, the gear might not be good. Um, and then two, like, I don't, why would you want to do that? Why don't you just want the things that you want? That way you can tell people like this worked for me and I used it because I wanted to, not because this person, you know, wanted me to use it and tell you that it's good. I don't know. I just, that's just my thing. But, um, I'm not saying that if anybody else has the opportunity for a gear sponsorship and they take it, like, don't blame them for it. But I just, you know, have my own reasons. Like I want to have my own brand. I don't want to be the face of somebody else's brand. Does that does that make sense? I don't know. It's just the way I think about it. But a CDT through hiker from 2015, I think Joe Brewer reported that the water for the first couple dozen miles is essentially cow pee. So maybe you're not missing out on much during the low water year. <laughs> you know, that's probably right. Well, at least cow doo doo water because it's, it's, it's bad. Like there's cow doo doo everywhere. Um, we were sitting yesterday and we didn't take our shoes off for a break, and Perk was like, I didn't take my shoes off, and I was like, yeah, I didn't either, and he's like, it was probably, like, the cow doo-doo all around that, you know, naturally made us not want to, but, uh, I don't know, the dust, everything is just cow poop, so, yeah. Uh, when starting out, how many miles did you do before you got into rhythm? Hmm, I'm not sure that I got into the rhythm yet. <laughs> I don't know, I think we're getting there. I think yesterday felt good, so... We'll see how it goes from, from here on out. Thanks for the Q&A. Have fun and be safe. Um, yeah, I try to do the live Q&As. I try to swap them up so that it kind of fits all time zones. I'm surprised that so many people were able to participate today. But it, it's really going to depend out here, like, when we get to town. And, you know, when we take a zero day, I can more or less control when it is. But, like, if we get here at night and we're leaving, you know, the following morning or, um, we get here early in the afternoon. So we're leaving early in the morning, you know, it just, it'll, it'll just depend on when we get where, um, but I will try to mix it up for y'all. So thank y'all so much for all the questions and for tuning in. I'm glad that so many people were able to participate and I mean, I couldn't be out here on the CDT if it wasn't for y'all. So, um, thank you for, you know, believing in me and, and let me have this opportunity. And, uh, I'll talk to y'all again before too long. I'll be um, keeping posts going, you know, and I'm going to try to do more live Q&As this time than I did on the PCT for sure. So, um, all right. Well, I hope everyone has a good Monday and a good week, and we'll talk to y'all later.